Hello, my name is Victor Lindgren and I'm the director of Cometen, the Comet. And it's about a Somalia guy that comes to Sweden, eventually comes to Sweden. And it's about his hellish voyage, <laughs> the whole way to make it. وثانية ذا يكتبون الترانيم والتراتيل عني نعم بهذا سيعبرون عن امتنانهم لي Welcome to the Berlinale. I'm glad you're here. Uh, you can uh, join us for the interview. Um, your film, Comet, is a film about two refugees uh, trying to make it to Sweden from Somalia. And, but only one can make it. Yeah. How did you come up with the story? Why did you want to do that movie? Uh, I came up with the story. Uh, I, I, I read a sh short story from an author called Melker, Gar Melker Garay. Uh, or Melker's story is about a comet. And his comet is, I think it's a religious or like a Jesus symbol, his comet that is coming to, um, coming to the world and, and with a lot of confidence and coming to the world to like uh, praise them and coming to, with light and coming with like a huge impact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I read the story and I thought I'd try to apply it on a, on a refugee instead, like go, going for something, coming to something. And that was like, for me, that was his inner voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so Melkes uh, text about the comment was uh, my refugee's like inner voice mm -hmm. uh, during this, when he's f fleeing. <laughs> and <clears throat> and I did the, when, when that thing like clicked, <laughs> it was, it, it went really fast for me. I like write, wrote it down in like a couple of hours. And it was, I thought the story was nice because it was, It was nice because it was simple as well. And uh, very much of, of the film is his uh, inner voice and contrasting with, uh, with the images of this horrible trip, yeah. of this horrible trip. But his inner voice is very calm and like with a lot of confidence that he's the comment that, and he's coming with something. Mm -hmm. so I think the, the contrast what was the thing that clicked for me and I, I like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Why I wanted to do the story was like I think it's a very important story, especially when when I um, when I met Abdi and started working with Abdi, Abdi Aziz, that is mm -hmm. the uh, actor in the movie, because his story is very similar to the story that I had wrote. And when he wrote the script, it was like this is my story, what the yeah. fuck, okay. and uh, and that was then it meant like very much for me starting working with it. And when I see how he's been treated and I see how uh, refugees are being treated in our Europe and when I, especially when you see how LGBT refugees are being treated, mm -hmm. you know, then I really wanted to do this story, tell this story. And therefore I was so happy when it, could, uh, when it came into the Berlinale as well because mm -hmm. then I know that it will have a yeah. huge impact. And how did you meet Abdi Aziz? Where did you guys... We met at a club. At like, a club? Yeah, okay. yeah. I live oh, wow. in, in Umeå, so it, it's, it's, yeah. it's a pretty small place in, in Sweden, in the northern mm -hmm. parts of Sweden. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that like clubs like in Berlin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not at all. Okay. And so we went to a sports bar and it was a dance floor on the sports mm -hmm. bar. And uh, he was like the only a bit flamboyant person like having fun. All the guys were maybe dancing like this <laughs> okay so then we started to provoke them like dancing flamboyant together <laughs> and then i don't know then we went to some uh, after party and then we started talking and then it was like i woke up the next day and was like fuck he could be the he's the comet he is that guy oh, wow. that was like really strange how i found him but it, it meant it meant so much finding him because he really is the story for for, yeah. for me And how was it for him to do that movie for, uh, with you? Um, Were there memories coming know. back while doing that? Yeah, Did he I, talk I about think that? so, because he, like, he cried when he read the script. Okay. And uh, I, I guess it's when you had such a trauma, hmm. because his trip was like nine months, okay. eight of them was in, was in prison. 
Okay. And he, he, you know, he, and he, he sat in a little boat over oh, wow. the <laughs> Mediterranean Sea. And yeah. I, I don't know. I think when you, when you start to open that those doors and really uh, in your brain, kind of, and really mm -hmm. need to talk about it and, and feel with them. I guess it's very emotional and I think very tiring because mm -hmm. he was like on set. He was sleeping. Yeah. We had a room. He slept. Came out and did some scenes, and then he like slept again. Oh my! I, I, okay. I think it was That's very, very emotional, but I don't know. He's he's like super duper strong, so I think for he for him it's not a biggie. Mm -hmm. But I I hope it ga it gave him something good as well, like dealing with the, that stuff and talking about it, and and especially like sharing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and really thinking that his his story means something to many people. Mm. And did he talk to you about the situation for queer people in Somalia? Can you maybe that the <coughs> experiences he made or mm. something? I don't know. I don't want to talk that much about his. Maybe more about his perspective on it than yeah. his uh, and than his like real life experience. No, that. But I I think uh, it's like super taboo <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's not really talked about and and when it is talked about it's very shameful and and often I think the families are rejecting them the, like the, the family structure the thought about the, uh, uh, a, a clean family mm -hmm. in that way um, yeah I think that is the thing that makes you very uh, I don't know what to say like insecure in, mm -hmm. in being a homosexual or LGBT person in in, you know, I, I guess in Somalia. Mm -hmm. okay. It's hard, hard to answer like really that question. It's just my thoughts about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, then I wanted to ask. And, and of course, yeah. it's like illegal. <laughs> it's like yeah, of it's course. like illegal to be. So you, you can get like a, what is it, death sentence. Yeah. Also, <laughs> and therefore it's so weird. Like being in Sweden, being a refugee, really mm. need and 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 not and not being being listened to mm. and not having like uh, the the thing that you're gay is not like in it's not a circumstance in the Swedish system mm -hmm. anymore so the, the LGBT refugees are more and more marginalized in that way because they're 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 dealing they're under the same quote mm -hmm. the same amount of like every other refugees and it's not considered anymore like a, a certain a certain what do you say certain thing to to consider uh, which is very strange like that that's the big thing that his it's if he, he goes back it's like his life that we're uh, bowling around with okay <laughs> yeah. okay mm. and um, you won a teddy in 2013 mm. for your short film undress me mm -hmm. you remember that name? I remember that. <laughs> um, maybe you can tell us uh, did it have an impact for your filmmaking career that you want a teddy or what does a teddy mean to you personally? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it had like a, I think it had a huge impact. For me, that's like the absolutely the biggest prize I've won because it means something that prize as well. I think the teddy is, uh, is political and the teddy is like very, very important prize. And that means that it has, it stands for something and it, and it, uh, it wants to raise like very important questions about uh, civil rights and about like your rights of, being who you want to be and like having the right for your sexuality and the way to express yourself and everything. So I think the Teddy Award is super important and I, for me by far it's the biggest prize in my career. So I, I was so happy when we won that and afterwards I've been like realizing how, how big that prize was and um, I've been very, very proud of that prize so often when I've been bragging about myself I yeah. always brag about the teddy. <laughs> yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, maybe you get the prize this year. You never know. Yeah, hopefully. Wish you good luck. Do you have any uh, upcoming projects now? Or yes, yes, yes. Planning yeah. something? <coughs> yeah, we have like a very. We're doing a lot of stuff now, and it's very nice because I really like working. And when you're in the flow, you want to be there. So that makes me happy. And now we're doing a feature film called mm -hmm. the, the Unpromised Land, uh, but it's not really 
fi uh, financed the whole way. So we have the material. We shot it this summer, but we don't have the money to edit it. Oh, okay. So that's like a very good situation and a very strange situation. So hopefully we can get some more money for that film because it's a very important film as well. It deals with like uh, the topic of also refugees, but it's more like migrants, like people coming uh, to, to Sweden, to my little town where mm -hmm. I'm born and raised in Holmsund to work but they're not really let, let into that okay. the society. Yeah. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit like the Comet, but it's more like focused on, on, on work and focused on the relationship with the people that they meet when they come to Holmsund. And also we're making a, a, a super queer film. <laughs> it's about uh, <clears throat> Nikita, Nikita Rissanen, mm -hmm. my friend. And uh, she has done the uh, transition uh, from male to female. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's her story, so it's kind of documentary, but not really. And she's like a super cool artist and mm -hmm. author. So we're doing it together, and we're both d directing. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, d d done the script together. And mm -hmm. she's more like super good at uh, uh, writing, and mm -hmm. I'm more experienced in, in, in directing. So we're going to help each other there and work nice. together all the way, me and Nikita. Oh. So that one is called Nikita. Nikita Forever, and it's gonna be like 45 minutes, so it's a very strange mm -hmm. format. But mm -hmm. that, there we have like the whole amount ready, so we got the budget there, so it's just gonna be get to shoot it, nice. and then hopefully it can like premiere Berlinale next year or next something. Year. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully right. with the with the Teddy Award too, because yeah. uh, that's I think that's a very important film in the in Teddy eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, then thank you very much for the mm. interview and uh, good luck. And Thank you. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> you too. Hello, my name is Victor Lindgren and I'm the director of Kometen, the Comet. And it's about a Somalia guy that comes to Sweden, eventually comes to Sweden, and it's about his hellish voyage <laughs> the whole way to make it. Uh, I came up with a story, uh, I, I, I read a sh short story from an author called Melker, Gar Melker Garay. Uh, or Melker's story is about a comet and his comet is, I think it's a religious or like a Jesus symbol his comet that is coming to وثانية سيكتبون الترانيم والتراتيل عني نعم بهذا سيعبرون عن امتنانهم لي Welcome to the Berlinale. I'm glad you're here. Uh, you can uh, join us for the interview. Um, your film Comet is a film about two refugees uh, trying to make it to Sweden from Somalia, and but only one can make it. Yeah. How did you come up with the story? Why did you want to do that movie? Coming to the world and and with a lot of confidence and coming mm -hmm. to the world to like uh, praise them and coming to, with light and coming with like a huge impact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I read the story and I thought I tried to apply it. On a, on a refugee instead, like go, going for something, coming to something. And that was like, for me, that was his inner voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so